So we're going to go through all three of those, starting first with how to build your facility to better accommodate your staffing needs. Yeah. So th this is this is actually fairly simplistic. You may have some or all of these things already in place. I hope you do. Uh, maybe you're just not leveraging or using them in the right way. We believe that every laundromat should be built so that it can be unattended. I'll say it again. Every laundromat should be built. It's not our store, in our opinion should be built so that it can be unattended. We think that's actually one of the foundational problems to a lot of staffing issues out there, is that stores are built so that they can't. It's not a matter of your business mm -hmm. model. We are fully attended. Mm -hmm. um, we, we definitely weren't always fully attended. Yeah, I think the big key here is if you have a staffing issue, but your facility can be run unattended, that's the difference between you closing for the day or yeah. you still being able to operate. It just gives you that flexibility because no matter how many redundancies, when we get to that, talking about how we do our scheduling, things happen. Yep. And because of the way we build our facilities, even when those things happen, we don't have to close. Yeah, we might have to be unattended for, it could be for a day or it could be for a half hour, mm -hmm. but... We have that flexibility. Yeah. So what we've done is kind of broken this down into four core things. Uh, I can't think of anything I forgot. There may be some little ones in here. There's four things. It's really three and then one depends on if you're open 24 hours or not. So the first one is to build your, we call it your drop-off room, but your, your employee area, whatever you want to call it, so that it can be secured. The way we do that is by just framing up a five, six, eight foot, whatever you want window. Um, that's, you know, we put a granite countertop in so it looks nice and, and professional, you know, tile the front wall, that type of stuff uh, to make it look nice. But at the end of the day, all you have to do is lock the doors and have some type of a roll down security door. And in a matter of two seconds, you can secure your entire employee area. That's the first mistake, in my opinion, that many, many, many laundromat operators make is, and, and I know, I'll, I'll fully admit, like, it doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing mm -hmm. as the nice, you know, window, uh, you know, granite countertops and mm -hmm. open air and pendant lighting and the whole, I, like, I get it. I get how, why people don't want to do it. But the reality is, in this business model, it's just functional. Um, so you can dress it up and make it nice, but in our opinion, that's one of the most important things you can do when it comes to the facility. The second one is having a separate alarm system. Now, hopefully you have at least one. I know some people don't, uh, but hopefully you have at least one alarm system. We actually have two alarm systems in our store that work independent of each other. One of them is what we call the drop-off room or the employee area. It's on a separate security system, same company, separate security system, separate alarm panel, the whole nine yards. So you could walk into our store as a customer if we are unattended and you have access to what we call the retail area of the store, the self-serve area, doing wash, dry, fold, that type of thing without never need to go into the employee area. You can get to the change machine, et cetera, et cetera, ATM machine, all those things are out in the retail area of the store. And that's on a separate alarm system. So that's Which the I front think you doors could, and things like that. You could use one alarm system because I know they have zones that they could do. So you could possibly use one alarm system and just zone it for the different areas where certain zones are secured. Because um, I know we do that in our house where only certain alarm oh, things yeah. are activated. Yeah, I guess so, that's true. So it would be a possibility just throwing that out there. Yeah, I guess that's true. It, well, regardless of how you set it up, it's all about being able to secure the back employee area. Mm -hmm. You know, what you don't want is customers coming into your store, especially if you're open 24 hours or something like that, breaking into a door into the drop-off room and not having an alarm active because the alarm is all or nothing. So that's mm -hmm. the second aspect to it. The third aspect to it is just having a video surveillance system in your store. You don't need a separate one for that, but you definitely need, depending on the size of the space, two, four, six cameras in your employee area so that you can see what's going on in that area in addition to the retail area of the store. Once again, I know some laundromats don't have alarm systems at all. Some don't have video surveillance systems at all. These are things you'll want to consider, and they do require a little bit of an investment in equipment and installation, but the monthly costs are very, very reasonable. Mm -hmm. 
The last one is what we call an access control system, uh, automated access control system. And this is if you're not 24 hours, and we'll explain this in a minute. If you are 24 hours, you don't need an access control system. But those are really the four key things that you need in your facility to be able to set up your store for success when it comes to staffing. And it really all boils down to what Carla just said. Build the store as if you're going to be unattended, and then staff as if you'll always be attended. And what ends up happening is, let's say you jump in the middle there and you got this hot mess on your hands, which we've all been there. Morning employee calls off, so the owner goes in and covers a shift. Afternoon employee calls off or quits or walks out or whatever. Next thing you know, the owner worked a 16-hour day and couldn't even leave to get a sandwich. Like, Mm -hmm. literally, just unless you want to lock your store and kick everybody out, you can't leave your store. What we always say is, even if that's not how you want to run your business, because by the way, it's not how we want to run our business, it's important to have that facility design in there so that worst case scenario, you can. Imagine how nice it would be if you as the owner did have to work a 16-hour day, but you, because you didn't want to be unattended, but you could leave for an hour and a half, go have a nice sit-down lunch, the store would be fine, you'd secure the back room, you might be right across the street at a restaurant eating, you can see your building, but you just get to leave for an hour or two. Like Mm -hmm. just those little things when it comes to life as a business owner, as a small business owner, really make a big difference in what's not gonna be a fun day in either scenario. And then even a step further, Carla, during COVID, you know, this is being shot in, you know, early 2023 at this point. But during COVID, there was all kinds of staffing issues. Mm -hmm. And we had an amazing team, but half of them were scared to death to leave their house. Mm -hmm. And our stores were essential. When we were deemed essential, we didn't really want to close. But we also didn't want to insist on our staffing going in. And that even includes our managers. Yeah. So for a couple months there, me and Carla, every day, just in the morning, we went from one store, cleaned, (laughs) next store, cleaned, next store, cleaned, next door, cleaned. And then in the evening, we did it again and locked all Mm -hmm. four of them up just as a means to an end. We didn't do much better business. There weren't one many customers in there. We wore a mask, but that's a kind of a worst case scenario there. Mm-hmm. And it allowed us to continue to keep our stores open and serve the public, even in a pandemic. Yeah. So. Um, just to hit on, I know you briefly covered automated access control system. Just to clarify what that is, you're talking about um, so automatic locks on the doors and stuff mm-hmm. like that, that yeah. you can control from somewhere yep. else. So there's okay. a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, one of them is you can just get automatic door locks and they're on timers. They just open and close and that's all they do. They're typically magnetic. They go on your front, your retail front doors and they're just on a timer and they just unlock the magnetism or lock the magnetism and open and close the door. That's a very plain Jane basic way of doing it. Less expensive, of course. Mm-hmm. What we've done and what we recommend you do if you have the budget for it is a full, what they call automated access control system. This is uh, a type of security panel system that any security company in your area can install for you. And it has an entire brain, for lack of a better term. So you can connect the wiring to your lighting system. You can connect it to certain outlets that maybe have an open sign on them. Okay. Um, you can connect it to the front doors. You can connect it to the alarm system. And all you do is take all these electronic or electric things and run a dry contact over to the fo- to the access control system. And that access control system now controls the power to all of those things. You could have okay. 13 different things connected to it. And when it arms, it kills them all. And when it does, vice versa. So what our stores look like, um, because we're we're fully attended, but we're not 24 hours. What our stores look like is 7 a.m. in the morning, the stores open automatically. There's no one there. The back room is secure. The front doors open and unlock. Mm -hmm. The alarm system goes off. The open signs come on. The radio comes on. The TV comes on. And customers just walk right in and Mm -hmm. help themselves. The reason we do that, is, as a side note, is we do that as what we call a cheat code in the payroll system. So we're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. The automated access control system at all of our stores opens the store at 7 a.m., but our staff doesn't actually arrive until 9. Yeah. Now, the store is clean from the night before. And if a customer were to have a problem or something like that, I mean, a staff member is going to be there typically within an hour or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how we've set up our store to kind of cheat. When you have four stores, we can cheat an hour and a half to two hours of payroll out of the beginning of the day. And it doesn't really ever negatively affect the customer experience because that's yeah. our big thing. If we're going to save payroll, save labor, things like that, we don't want to do that at the expense of our customer experience. So an access control system lets you do that. If you're open 24 hours, not an issue. You just leave the mm-hmm. store run as it is all night. 
But if you're not open 24 hours, an access control system is a really nice thing to do. Or at a minimum, you'd need to leave your lights on all day long and then just turn on and off the, the or lock and unlock the front doors. <laughs>